Okay, now let's talk about the general power rule for integration. You remember there was a general power rule for differentiation. Uh, well, there's a general power rule for integration as well. Now, here's what you have to understand about this general power rule. The only time you use the general power rule is when you're raising a function to a power. So let's say that u is some function of x raised to a power and you want to use this general power rule to integrate it. Well, the general power rule basically looks exactly like the simple power rule, but what you have to remember is in the general power rule, u is not just x, u is some function of x. So it's actually the same answer, but it's the function to the n plus 1 power divided by n plus 1 plus a constant. Now, the, the problem that has to be true is that um, you must have, and this should be du, not dx. So what must be true here in this case is that this du has to be the derivative of u for this to work. Okay, so you can't just have a dx in there. You, you've got to have du. And that sounds a little bit complicated, but I'll explain it to you with an example. I'm going to give you a couple that work out perfectly for this rule because they don't always work out perfectly. So let's take a look at an integral that involves a function raised to a power. So in this integral, um, I want to look for the most complicated looking function that's raised to a power. Well, here I have x raised to a power. Well, that's not very complicated. But here I have 2x cubed plus 1 raised to a power. It's raised to the 8th power. So what I do at first when I teach this is I rearrange it. The function that's raised to the power I write first, and then I put everything else that's, that's in here with this function with the dx. Okay, now there's a reason for that. And you don't have to do this, but, but it's, it help, it's helpful in um, integrating. Okay, now, if I'm going to use the general power rule, then this function right here, this function right here has to be my u. So I have u raised to that eighth power there. So I have u to the eighth. The question is, though, is this part du? Because this only works if I can write it in the form of u to the eighth du. Well, the only way I'm going to know if that's du is to figure out what is du. Okay, let me show you how you figure out what du is. Okay, so if we claim that u is this expression 2x cubed plus 1, then the derivative of u with respect to x must be 6x squared. But I don't want du over dx. I want, I want du. So let me go ahead and multiply both sides by dx. So multiply both sides by dx, and I'll get du equals 6x squared dx. So now, if you look at this right here, this is du. So this up here is u to the 8th, and then this beside it is du. So I have the proper form, the integral of u to a power du. And so I've written it again down here. So I have u to the 8th du. Well, now that I have that proper form, I can use the power rule here and write that, using the power rule, write that as u to the 9th over 9 plus a constant. Now, on these indefinite integrals, when you use a u substitution like this, you always have to write, and always remember this, you always have to return to your original variable. So let's go back and remember what u equaled. u is actually equal to 2x cubed plus 1, so I need to substitute 2x cubed plus 1 back in here for u. So I get 2x cubed plus 1 to the ninth all over 9 and then plus my constant. So that's how you uh, integrate. Now, in this example, this worked out perfectly because this stuff over here turned out to be du. Well, if that 6 hadn't been there, then this wouldn't be du. But there is a way to make up for a missing constant, and I'll show you that in the next example.
So if you look at this expression, the integral of x cubed times 5x to the fourth plus 1 to the seventh power, well, you've got x raised to the third power, then you've got this complicated looking function here raised to the seventh power. So I'm going to think that my u is 5x to the fourth plus 1. So that's going to be my u. So it's whatever the function, the most complicated function that you have raised to a power, that's generally going to be your u. Now I rearrange the order here, and again you don't have to, but I, I write the u to the seventh first, and then whatever's left I put it to the right. So I have x cubed dx over here to the right. Okay, now when I did this over here, uh, I did du over dx and got 6x squared, then I multiply both sides by dx to get du. Well, all that means is, is that du is simply the derivative of this times dx. So you don't have to go through that middle step there each time if you just remember that. So du is the derivative of u, which is 20x cubed times dx. So the derivative of this is 20x cubed. So du would be 20x cubed dx. Okay, now notice right here, if I had a 20 right here with this x cubed, then this, this portion would be du. But I don't have a 20. Okay, well there's a way, there's a way, a clever way to get a 20 in there so that that will become du. And let me show you. Basically what you're doing is, is you're just multiplying by 1 by using 20 over 20. And what you're going to do is, since 20 over 20 doesn't change the value of the integral, you're actually going to take the 20 in the numerator and multiply it, move it back in here in the integral. So therefore it'll be right there with the 20x cubed dx. And then the denominator, 1 over 20, you're going to leave it on the outside. Well now when I do that, this portion right here now becomes du and then this portion right here becomes u to the seventh power. So now I have the integral of u to the seventh power du and don't forget you've got that 1 20th out there that's got to be carried along with it. So now if I integrate u to the seventh that's just u to the eighth over eight but remember we're multiplying that by 1 over 20 so when you multiply 1 over 20 by this the denominator is going to be 160 because 20 times 8 is 160 and then remember we've got to go back and replace u with what we used up here 5x to the fourth plus 1 so instead of u to the eighth we change it back to x so we get 5x to the fourth plus 1 to the eighth and then plus a constant so that's your uh, antiderivative for that one Okay, let's take a look at this one. With this one, we have x squared minus 1, but it's not raised to a power. But then we have this polynomial 2x cubed minus 6x plus 1 raised to the fifth power. So this has got to be my u. So u has to be that trinomial. Well, the derivative of that would be 6x squared minus 6. And remember, du is just that derivative times dx. But notice, if I factor a 6 out of this, I can see that it looks a lot like what I have here. That's x squared minus 1, but du is not x squared minus 1. It's 6 times x squared minus 1 dx. Now I have the dx over here. So I didn't arrange them this time, but, but if, you, if you were to have a 6, let me show you. If you look at the two items that I highlighted here, x squared minus 1 and dx, that is almost du, but not quite, because du contains x squared minus 1 in dx, but it also contains a 6. So what I need to do is multiply the inside by 6. So if I now multiply the inside by 6, if you put these two together, just mentally put them side by side, then 6 times x squared minus 1 dx is actually du. So these factors put together form du. And now inside here, this polynomial to the fifth is actually the u that I used raised to the fifth power. And remember when I multiply the inside by six, I got to multiply the outside by one sixth. And actually, I forgot to carry it along here. So that should be one sixth comes along with that. 
So you end up with 1 6 times the integral u to the fifth du. And now you can just use the power rule on this. Since it's u to the fifth du, it's going to be u to the sixth over sixth, and then times the 1 6 that carries along with it. And then, of course, for the denominator, 6 times 6 is 36. And then for the numerator, we can replace u with this trinomial, 2x cubed minus 6x plus 1. And then don't forget to add your constant. And there's your answer. So here I have an expression, uh, x times square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Well, remember, 1 minus x squared, square root of 1 minus x squared can be written as a power. So notice it's, I wrote it as 1 minus x squared to the 1 half power. Okay, so since that's the most complicated expression raised to a power, let's say u is 1 minus x squared. Well, then du would be the derivative of this times dx, so that would be minus 2x dx. Now, if you go back and look, you see what I've highlighted here, the x and the dx? Well, x dx is not quite du. It's missing the negative 2. So, so to fix that, I can multiply the inside of this by negative 2. So if I multiply the inside of this by negative 2, that x dx would have a factor of negative 2. And I rearranged it so that you could easily see that. So now, this is du. Okay, and then this, of course, 1 minus x squared is u to the 1 half. So basically, this is the integral of u to the 1 half times du. Now, in order for me to multiply the inside by negative 2, if you multiply the inside of an integral by a constant, you must multiply the outside of the integral by the reciprocal of that constant, and that just keeps it balanced. See, really what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by negative 2 over negative 2, but the negative 2 is going on the inside, and the negative 1 half is staying on the outside. Okay, so now you know how to integrate u to the 1 half du with the power rule. That would just be u to the 3 halves over 3 halves, and then times the negative 1 half that comes along, and then just use a little bit of a algebra there to simplify that and you get u to the 3 halves over 3. Actually, you get minus u to the 3 halves over 3 plus a constant. And then so replacing u with 1 minus x squared gives you a minus 1 minus x squared to the 3 halves over 3 plus a constant. Okay, so for these two, I'll show you how to get them in the proper form, and then you can finish the integration. So this one, I have x squared over 5 minus x cubed to the 4th. Well, remember, that can be written as x squared times 5 minus x cubed to the negative 4 so that I can get it into a power. Well, since this is raised to a power, 5 minus x cubed is raised to a power, I'm going to let u equal that. And then du, if I take the derivative of this, I get minus 3x squared. So du would be minus 3x squared dx. Okay, well now, if you multiply the inside by negative 3, see, I've got the x squared dx, but what I don't have is the negative 3. So notice I multiplied the inside here by negative 3, and so if you take that negative 3x squared along with the dx, I didn't rearrange it this time, but that gives you du. And then you can't multiply the inside by negative 3 unless you multiply the outside by negative 1 third. So I have negative 1 third on the outside. And then um, now this is just u to the negative 4, so now I have the integral uh, u to the negative 4 du with a negative 1 third on the outside. And when you integrate this, just use the power rule and then uh, use a little algebra to clean it up. And then at the end, make sure you replace u with what it equaled. And there's your final answer. Okay, this one, I have 1 over square root of x times the square root minus 3 to the 10th power. Well, since this is raised to the 10th power, let's let u equal that, that square root of x minus 3. And if you take the derivative of this, you can have to do this on scratch. But the derivative of this is actually going to be 1 half with a square root of x in the denominator. So it's going to be 1 over 2 square root of x dx. Well, here I have 1 over square root of x and a dx. So what I need is a half. So I need to multiply the inside by a half and the outside by 2. Then this is going to be u to the tenth. And this is, all of this is going to be du. So I have 2 times the integral u to the tenth du. And then you just apply the power rule and um, get 2u to the 11th over 11 plus a constant and then replace u with what it equaled up there in the beginning. Now, we'll return to this rule later with definite intervals.